opportunity, but also new dangers. Phyllis Bennis is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. She joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Phyllis, good to have you again on Al Jazeera. What did you make of this speech? President Obama has tried to lay out his foreign policy several times. This was uh, the fourth major speech on foreign policy. Did you hear anything that you haven't heard before? Well, it was very interesting to hear the president address the question of American leadership that is not military. Now, that's an interesting idea. Of course, it begs the question of who says that the U.S. must always lead. I don't know that the rest of the world necessarily agrees with that. But to the degree that he would talk about non-military leadership, that would be a good thing. The problem is, in practice, the speech comes less than 24 hours after his last speech yesterday when he discussed the plan to extend U.S. military presence in Afghanistan for another two years with another 10,000 troops uh, in a situation where clearly the military is not going to uh, be able to make the situation any better. So all, all of his rhetoric about this isn't just about military solutions, not every problem has a military solution. Mm. That's fine, but he is not looking for non-military solutions. Now, to counter critics who say the U.S. is not doing enough in Syria, Barack Obama promised to ramp up support. Take a listen. Additional resources I'm announcing today, we will step up our efforts to support Syria's neighbors. Jordan and Lebanon, Turkey and Iraq, as they contend with refugees and confront terrorists working across Syria's borders. I will work with Congress to ramp up support for those in the Syrian opposition who offer the best alternative to terrorists and brutal dictators. And we will continue to coordinate with our friends and allies in Europe and the Arab world to push for a political resolution of this crisis and to make sure that those countries, and not just the United States, are contributing their fair share to support the Syrian people. It seems, Phyllis, that on Syria, he's going again for the middle ground here. Do you think this training uh, will, will change the balance on the ground? No. I think the problem is, as he said in a different part of his speech, there is no military solution. There's no military solution in Syria. There's no military solution in Afghanistan. And sending military training, sending, as they've indicated privately, they will be sending more weapons. The, the Congress and others are trying to prevent the U.S. from sending these, uh, what are known as man pads, single person fired uh, uh, anti-aircraft weapons that were so deadly against civilians in other situations and can be again. This is not going to help the situation in Syria. When he talked about supporting neighboring states in the struggle to, to protect refugees, that's mm -hmm. crucial. But linking that to saying we're going to help them go after terrorists, well the problem is the people that those governments and those they support are going after are not the terrorists. It's a brutal regime. but. The terrorists are on the same side as those, quote, moderate opposition forces that the U.S. is trying to arm. So but, but we do have you a think very then, complex situation in Syria. Do you think then that uh, the Obama administration really wants Assad gone because if uh, Al -Nasr, the Al Nasra Front and other Al Qaeda linked groups come into a leadership position, that would be much scarier for, for the U administra U.S. administration, wouldn't mm -hmm. it be? Well, it would not be the first time that the U.S. has overthrown or tried to overthrow dictators only to leave greater chaos in its wake. I mean, we can only look at, at Iraq and the, the terrible situation there where violence has been spiking to, it, to levels we haven't seen in, in several years. The situation in Libya, very much the same. He even referred, at one point in his speech, he referred to the capacity of battle-hardened extremists mm. now in Syria. Well, of course, the, the place where those extremists got their training was in Iraq, fighting against the U.S. So the idea that somehow it's going to be different in Syria if the U.S. now starts to train and arm others who will be clearly seen as representing U.S. and Western interests, we're going to have the same problem. The same extremists are going to use that opportunity to train again, to then go to another country, perhaps. So each of these countries where the U.S. engages in regime change through the force of arms has left chaos and greater violence behind. Briefly on Egypt, Phyllis, uh, he said uh, security first in Egypt, human rights second. What message does that send? 
It sends a message to those who are imprisoned, to those, the families of those who have been killed by the military regime, that we apparently in the United States are going to continue to support a military regime despite its responsibility for massive human rights violations, despite the fact that many of the people who fought against both this regime and who fought against the Morsi regime have pulled back and said, you know, this has been a real problem. We need to go back to the original demands of the Arab Spring, the original demands of Tahrir Square, which was about dignity, which was about human rights, which was not about putting the military back in power with the power to, uh, to imprison thousands of people, to kill over a thousand people in protests. Uh, this is not what people went to Tahrir Square for in the first place. Mm. And unfortunately, it sounds like the Obama administration is saying, we're going to continue to support the military. All right. Thank you very much for your thoughts, Phyllis. That's Phyllis Bennis from the Institute for Policy Studies joining us there live from Washington. Thank you. While in Egypt, polls have closed and the counting has started in the presidential election. Election officials extended voting for an extra day in a bid to get voters to cast their ballots. They blamed the hot weather for the lack of enthusiasm 